Five days after commemorating the Heroes' Day here, President Rwanda returned to the site for yet another national responsibility. He arrived in a helicopter for the military funeral of the two veterans of the Namibian independence struggle. The two heroes had a lot in common. They were both Josephs, participated in the Mulwombashe battle, and both died on the 18th of this month. This was just eight days before Heroes' Day commemoration with the historic unveiling of Dr. Sam Nyoma's statue representing the glorious history of the Namibian people's resistance to colonialism. Their bodies lay in state at Omuluwombashe, their former military base, next to each other, and they are the first to be laid to rest here since it was declared a national monument in 2004. President Rwanda and delegation built the bodies before leading the funeral procession to the burial site. This is a cemetery for the heroes of Namibia. Not everyone should be buried here, only those identified by the president. The two war veterans had a rich history. The Eurobeast mainly told of the hardships they went through, including the harsh conditions under which they operated at Omulu Wombashi Bend. Their widows' messages were also about the suffering they went through due to their husbands' political activities. But when all was said and done, independence dawned and the Libyans are now charting their own destiny. Such history, said the President, must be documented. There is a need to write this history while some of the veterans are here. Our children need to know the Namibia of yesterday and the Namibia of today. Since it was a military funeral, the coffins were lowered concurrently with saluted interment with NDS officers fully in charge of the proceedings. They made history as members of the first contingent of plane fighters to establish a military base here and they are also making history as a fest to be buried here.